Very good afternoon to every one of you. At the outset, I would like to express my sincere thanks to Rajiv for inviting me to be here in this particular symposium. Uh, this is uh, more for learning from uh, brilliant presentations which have been happening since yesterday morning. And also at the same time take this, uh, take the advantage of this opportunity to present uh, the work that we have been doing. Uh, in fact, uh, starting uh, almost more than five years now. And uh, the leader of this program is uh, Professor R.P. Sarma, who is here in the front row, and in fact, who visualized this particular program, and also spearheaded this, the multi-institutional program, and you can see in, um, six institutions are involved in this particular activity, funded by the Department of Biotechnology, Government of India. Uh, we were uh, involved in rice genome sequencing at the National Research Center for Plant Biotechnology. And uh, after sequencing, physical mapping, sequencing, and the comparison, uh, a lot of insight was uh, you know, obtained with regard to genome constitution, uh, the genome evolution pattern of rice, uh, five chromosome basic, or 10 chromosome, seven chromosome, or 12 chromosome, and then the relationship among different chromosomes, for instance, the last paper uh, clearly revealed the relationship between chromosome 11 and 12. In addition to this, we also knew that uh, the genes, their distribution pattern, how they are organized, and more importantly, this provided the tools for understanding function of the rice genome. Uh, the the, uh, coming to the objective of this, uh, the, the uh, title of this particular symposium, that using next generation genomic uh, you know, platform for crop improvement, what all it should address. And obviously, understanding, this is one aspect, understanding the whole genome by parts. There are presentations already. Understanding the whole genome by the whole, the whole genome analysis number of presentations and all this, and also, as highlighted in the very first lecture, that you need not bother about understanding the functions, but go by uh, the, the markers uh, using a training population and subsequently using them in genomic selection, uh, not necessarily uh, understanding the function of genes and genomes, or pursue all, and then ultimately, uh, you know, have a rich armory uh, of information and for uh, utilizing in crop improvement. Uh, if you have to understand the gene and genome function, uh, obviously uh, we have to assign biological functions to the genes which have been predicted, or identifying genes which, uh, which are working in specific processes uh, uh, or events. Uh, understanding interaction networks, a number of them are presented, and finding functions of repeats and non-coding regions. Not a single presentation, but there are quite a bit of efforts which are happening, and determining the influence of epigenome uh, on the phenome. Uh, although uh, not much was presented, uh, but uh, Andrej was uh, making a point uh, yesterday that uh, this could be uh, one of the uh, points uh, very relevant uh, to understand the phenome, and ultimately uh, could be utilized in genomic selection, how it would be uh, at this point uh, I know uh, 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 I would not really present anything on this. And the last one is uh, defining the roles of single nucleotide polymorphisms. And probably if you have to understand the function of the genomes, uh, we have to understand this, and which is a long, uh, strenuous job uh, because the germplasm is huge and there will be millions of these sitting there in genes, outside genes, and doing something and which we don't really understand. Very little understanding on this. In addition to this, one can also induce mutations and try to see how they are influencing uh, the, trait, uh, the trait expression. In fact, uh, in this particular uh, presentation, uh, I would be really focusing on this, using induced mutations uh, to understand uh, the uh, genes and also uh, their effect on trait expression. So this is the kind of uh, networking that uh, was uh, uh, visualized and also very effectively executed by Professor Sharma and uh, in different institutions uh, phenotyping. This is the unique aspect of this particular network. 
uh, uh, hundreds and thousands and lakhs of mutants have been developed worldwide, stored in the gene bank. Very little is characterized. And the objective of this particular network was to characterize and uh, uh, not only just for morphology uh, uh, traits, but also uh, many agronomically important traits. Evaluate them and then find out something which would be useful uh, practically in crop improvement programs. So that was the kind of, and that what, what was chosen is uh, the Nagina 22. Uh, uh, can you tell that uh, this is, uh, I think he's, uh, he's here or he's now out of the, <laughs> so this is, oh, he's here. Uh, so quite a bit of sequencing he has done and uh, probably, uh, you know, uh, he can add more. But this is a typical OS type, uh, genotype. Uh, and then uh, we have a mutant resource in this. And more importantly, uh, the, it is internationally used. Uh, as uh, a heat tolerant uh, uh, genotype. In addition to that, it's also drought tolerant and it is a wide compatibility, a variety and so on and so forth. Uh, so a large number of useful traits are there in this particular one and we chose this and you chose also chemical uh, EMS to induce mutations. And, uh, uh, and uh, uh, through evaluation and uh, uh, you know, characterization, a large number of uh, different uh, distinct uh, validated mutants are now identified uh, and then you can see dwarf mutants, high tailoring mutants and you can see the grain size and then the panicle uh, and uh, I, this is in the field you can see the kind of uh, uh, appearance of the leaves uh, and then large scale regeneration from the panicle uh, tissues, uh, the root uh, uh, characteristics and there is another root mutant you can see this is a mutant and this is uh, the Nagina 22. Uh, so large number of mutants uh, are now identified and uh, uh, now uh, uh, in the uh, bank, uh, mutant bank. And this is uh, another uh, recent one, uh, particularly uh, Dr. Robin from TNAU has identified this particular uh, mutant uh, uh, tolerant to image tapper uh, and then uh, being characterized. In fact, the, the candidate gene also is identified and mutation is also defined. And salt tolerant mutants, drought tolerant mutants, and bacterial leblight resistant mutants. This is the one which was identified by Dr. Kuldeep Singh from Punjab Agriculture University. And this was done at uh, us at uh, the uh, IRI and salt tolerant mutants. A number of them, the useful mutants have been identified uh, through rigorous phenotyping at different locations. And uh, the kind of variation for yield contributing traits, it's a wide range of variation. In fact, all the mutant population which are stored uh, in the international gene banks probably would reveal the same thing and uh, nothing new and then this is uh, uh, Nagina 22 and this is the kind of variation one finds with regard to the panicle architecture, with regard to branching, uh, grain number, uh, panicle length and all that. And uh, a representative set of, uh, uh, a small set rather you can see the kind of variation for yield and yield contributing traits, uh, particularly the tiller height and panicle length and so on and so forth, and uh, panicle, uh, spike lid fertility, uh, 1000 grain weight. So quite a bit of uh, diversity with regard to yield and yield contributing traits. Uh, so, uh, uh, and then this is the summary, and the 22,292 uh, lines have been developed from independent M1 plants. Uh, so, uh, and these, uh, uh, the M2 and M3, they're all independently maintained. So, uh, so this, is, this is the lineage of 22,292 M1 plants. These are derived and uh, uh, this, the frequency is uh, tallying with what has been already reported. Uh, but the one important point is that the, the chemical concentration which are used for IR64, uh, that was uh, uh, much higher than what was used for Nagina 22. It was found more susceptible at lower dose. And this is one which, which I have reported recently, but very importantly, uh, 548 distinct and validated mutants are identified for very useful traits, including herbicide tolerance and phosphorus use efficiency, bacterial leaf blight, uh, and also uh, uh, root and root architecture and salt tolerance and drought tolerance included, as I said. So this is uh, the first part of my presentation that we have a huge resource, uh, uh, not as huge as uh, there are several others which are huge, more huge, more large than uh, this particular one, but more importantly, characterized and phenotyped for many different traits. That's the uniqueness of this particular program and anybody interested can express interest and write to Professor Sarma uh, to uh, utilize these uh, mutants uh, for functional genomic analysis in case of rice. Uh, this is one example that uh, we identified one mutant which is uh, growing for 10 to 12 days in 25% PEG 
and uh, subsequently in soil also we analyzed uh, this is after six seven days uh, after withdrawing irrigation and this is after re irrigation and uh, this is a mutant uh, which was characterized further and as you see here germination also uh, you can see uh, does exceedingly well as, well as compared to Nagina 22. Mind you, Nagina 22 is also a host type drought tolerant uh, uh, you know, line. Uh, and this is uh, another mutant which is uh, having a gain of function mutation, maybe one or maybe several, we are yet to really characterize this in detail, but it has a gain of function mutation uh, and then that gives uh, you know, very high uh, germination. Uh, radical primal emergence happens uh, without much problem as compared to this one. Uh, the, uh, this is also a detailed characterization of different traits including plant height and, uh, and many other traits. Uh, one particular thing I would like to mention here is the relative water content under control and, uh, uh, and then the uh, other, uh, other traits, flag leaf width and the flag leaf length, number of panicle. Uh, you do find uh, differences uh, for some of these traits, although plant height doesn't differ much and several other traits which don't differ much. And uh, more importantly, this one is, uh, you know, different with regard to chalkiness, 100% uh, chalky uh, grains you obtain with regard to this particular mutant. Uh, uh, if you look at the phenotype and morphology, uh, epicular pigmentation is a typical uh, feature of Nagina 22 and this one uh, is uh, there present in this particular line. And uh, if you give stress, uh, this is uh, the uh, mutant and uh, the root elongation takes place and you can see the root length. Uh, studied in a tube of course and then uh, uh, as compared to uh, Nagina 22. Uh, so uh, and then you do find uh, when you do anatomy you do find uh, there are differences with regard to uh, the size of this uh, central metaxylem and also uh, the uh, 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 relative maximum root length and relative root uh, length density uh, also very significantly different uh, between Nagina 22 and this particular mutant. Uh, we did uh, gene expression analysis and then uh, it, uh, uh, you know, uh, people suggest that use mutant and it will give you a few genes uh, showing differential expression, uh, but we, we did find in this particular case hundreds and thousands of genes showing differential expression when you expose to stress. And if you see this particular one, uh, 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 mutant uh, stress and uh, rather uh, uh, mutant uh, stress and mutant control, you can see several thousand genes showing uh, an up or down regulation and similarly uh, there are others uh, Nagina stress and Nagina control for instance uh, if you take uh, I know thousands of genes and similarly mutant control and mutant stress also shows uh, even more number of genes showing differential expression and if you take uh, 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 Nagina uh, sorry mutant uh, stress and mutant control uh, there is quite a bit and Nagina stress and Nagina control and Nagina stress and mutant stress uh, also there is uh, for this particular one for instance Nagina stress and mutant stress you find uh, even thousands more than thousands showing differential expression. And uh, uh, some of these uh, are also showing uh, a unique uh, expression in situation for instance if you take Nagina stress and Nagina control uh, these are the genes which are showing unique expression this is mutant stress and mutant control these are the genes showing uh, unique expression in uh, response to stress. Uh, so, uh, so there are genes uh, showing differential expression and we have characterized the pathways and then narrowing down to some of them as usual so, uh, so and hitting out some of those uh, which are co-expressed and clustered together for instance in this particular case uh, this is high expression uh, in case of mutant stress and this is very low expression mutant stress. So they are the clustering of genes and they are uh, functionally characterizing further uh, you know what they might be doing in different pathways uh, with regard to imparting drought tolerance. Uh, but as I said that this particular mutant uh, not only shows uh, you know uh, uh, drought tolerance it is also number of other associated traits which are different so obviously there could be differences in a uh, few of those genes uh, that affect the trait expression. Uh, so, uh, so coming to so that is a kind of a whole a transcriptome approach uh, to understand and identify genes which would be uh, uh, you know, possibly uh, uh, related to uh, differences in phenotype. And uh, uh, you know, coming down to, and we have to yet to identify gene, specifically uh, genes or uh, gene or genes which would be influencing trait expression. Uh, this is another example that uh, we obtained this mutant early uh, and that's the reason why we could make cross and then went ahead and to understand uh, what could be the possible uh, molecular basis. Uh, so this is uh, one mutant which is uh, having sh very short grains 
and uh, grain length is shortened to almost 29-30 percent. Grain width is shortened by 15 percent, and grain thickness is reduced by five, uh, increased by 5 percent, and grain weight is reduced uh, by 19 percent, and so on and so forth. So, so again, uh, grain traits are very significantly different, uh, you know, in the mutant as compared to uh, Nagina 22. Uh, sorry. Uh, <coughs> Uh, we did uh, uh, use different hormones to see if there is an, any effect and we found that uh, none of them could, uh, you know, uh, make any difference with regard to uh, grain size. <clears throat> uh, we did some uh, electron, uh, scanning electron microscope and we did find there is a difference with regard to uh, the cell's uh, number and size and that's what is summarized here. Uh, you can see uh, with regard to cell length, uh, in this mutant, it is less, and in Nagina, is uh, you know uh, 28 micrometer more as compared to uh, this particular mutant, and similarly, cell width is uh, reduced in this particular case, uh, 12 micrometer uh, reduced. Uh, so, uh, so this is uh, uh, the summary of and there are other details here. So, basically, the uh, cell length is reduced, uh, and then uh, cell uh, number is also more uh, uh, in this case. So this is uh, Nagina 22, this is uh, M40, and uh, length, this is grain length, this is grain width, and this is cell length. Uh, cell length is more here, and cell length is less here. Uh, cell width is less here, cell width is more here. And number of cells along the grain length is more here, this is less here. And number of cells along the grain width uh, is also uh, more here, and almost comparable, it's not much of difference. Uh, so, so this is basically understanding uh, the uh, what has happened to this uh, with regard to uh, cells uh, in these grains. A grain filling rate uh, was also studied, and what one finds is uh, that uh, the the maximum difference in both the fresh and dry weight was there. And uh, this is after 20 days after heading, and uh, this is uh, grain filling. And you can see here, uh, this is uh, the mutant, and this is Nagina 22. The rate of grain filling was also slow. Uh, in case of mutant as compared to uh, the Nagana 22. Uh, Mary Cross and what we have chosen is R64 and uh, 1121. 1121, Pusa 1121 having the longest grain. And uh, so, so that we chose and make the, make the cross. And in F2 itself, as it was, uh, was presented yesterday, uh, we chose only those which are having very similar, uh, almost identical grain shape and size uh, as uh, mutant. And uh, uh, we did the uh, you know, uh, kind of selected mutants for the whole genome and uh, try to find out what are the reg region which is very specifically associated with uh, these short grain mutants. And this is what was found out that in chromosome 5, low, short arm, uh, you have region which is very specific. They are all mutants, short grain, and this red one is short grain parent, and blue one is long grain, grain parent, and these are all recombinants having sh very short grains. And this is the only region which uh, turned out to be corresponding to uh, this uh, in a particular mutation. And uh, so that region was further characterized uh, in detail. Uh, and you can see uh, these are the long grain recombinants, these are the short grain recombinants, and uh, uh, there was uh, one is to one correspondence uh, between this. Uh, and uh, uh, selective genotyping, and this is in different population also it was mapped and Q-table was localized uh, for this particular one in this same region. And uh, you know you can see the grain size, these are longer ones and these are shorter ones, and the correspondence between uh, the genotypic constitution in this region and this is the phenotype of the recombinants and that ensured uh, that uh, you know uh, suggested very much that uh, the mutation is somewhere here in this region and we uh, took several recombinants from different populations for example this other population also uh, was uh, treated in the same way and you can see this region clearly differentiated between the short grain and long grain types and this is the size of the grain in this recombinant, this is the size of the grain uh, in long grains uh, in this set of recombinants uh, having the alternative marker allele uh, for this particular locus for instance. Uh, so, uh, and then we took large number of recombinants from different, uh, you know, two different populations uh, and then uh, narrowed down further uh, to a 250 kilobase region and uh, in this 250 kilobase region what we found is uh, this particular locus, uh, this is uh, encoding a kinesin 13 family protein that was already reported uh, and known as uh, short and round seed 3 gene, SRS3 gene, uh, already cloned uh, by uh, Kitagawa in 2010. And uh, what we did is, uh, you know, we, uh, we took the population, as you suggested, <laughs> presented yesterday, uh, the population which was uh, between the mutant and Nagina 22, and uh, in those short grain mutants, uh, you know, recombinants were identified and this gene was sequenced in those. 
and, uh, uh, and that is the kind of correspondence you see that all these uh, mutants or uh, other uh, uh, recombinants which are having short uh, you know, uh, grains, uh, they are having uh, similar uh, mutation, I mean the nucleotide is uh, that right, T here and this is, uh, uh, this is uh, Nagina 22 having C, this is IR64, this is PUSA 1121, the long grain variety and all these having C and the mutant and the recombinants, short grain recombinants having uh, you know, T here. So, uh, so this further uh, uh, supported uh, that this mutation in the whole gene SRS3 and in this particular region uh, is uh, contributing, being uh, genetically strongly associated and linked to the traits uh, in the, uh, you know, uh, segregating population uh, should be the causal uh, change uh, responsible for short grain uh, expression, phenotypic expression. And uh, uh, also uh, what we did is uh, this uh, C2T uh, change in this particular mutation leads to a stop codon uh, in the process actually. So a truncated protein is produced and this was already known and this is uh, about the gene. Uh, there are different motifs uh, into particularly in which we find our mutation located in this particular switch and that makes the difference. So when we compare it to other mutation you can see here this is the gene and these are the kind of uh, different uh, this particular switches and our mutation is located somewhere here. This is M40 and uh, when you compare it to other mutation in this particular gene we find that our mutation is a novel allele, a new allele, which is not even there, uh, which is not even there in other, uh, you know, germplasm lines. That's what we sequence, you uh, know, short grain types in the germplasm and in this particular gene, and we found uh, that there was uh, not even uh, one. Uh, so uh, what you find is uh, this is uh, the mutation already reported, and this also carries a stop codon uh, to 43 uh, position, and then this is uh, uh, another uh, substitution leading to abnormal splicing and this is uh, one SRC3 which was uh, you know characterized earlier uh, this is uh, also a substitution uh, mutation uh, amino acid substitution and uh, our mutation again creates a stop codon as it was reported earlier and this mutation is here somewhere in third action of this particular gene and ours is in the fifth action and corresponding to this particular uh, N2 uh, motif and uh, this uh, again gives a truncated protein and if you see the grain length reduced and this particular one it's 29 percent reduction and this is also again around 29 percent reduction and these are uh, you know in, uh, in uh, laser reduction as compared to the base substitutions and this is abnormal splicing and uh, leading to laser substitution a uh, laser reduction uh, in grain length as compared to these uh, truncated uh, mutations. Uh, uh, so, uh, so this is uh, one story that uh, we could find and uh, come to uh, the, uh, the, the candidate gene and also identify the new allele and confirm this not only in the recombinants but also in, in, uh, in uh, germplasm lines that our is a new allele which is induced by the ethylmethane sulfonate uh, in the background of Nagina 22. And this is uh, yet another story that uh, the, the dwarf and the high tillering mutant the DIT1 which we identified in the very first year and then uh, followed by a rigorous mapping and all that. Uh, there are others uh, which we knew. And, uh, you know, uh, we were also doing tilling and we selected some of these genes uh, for tilling, but we did not find, uh, you know, uh, any change in many of those. And uh, uh, we found that in this particular mutant, the internode, the number doesn't change, but the internode size changes. Uh, all the internodes are reduced in their size and their length as compared to Nagina 22. And the uh, mutation also was following a strict 3 to 1 uh, segregation uh, in the, uh, you know, uh, and giving us uh, idea that probably it's again a single uh, major locus which is uh, responsible. Uh, we did hormonal uh, treatments, uh, particularly uh, GA and BR, and we didn't find the response uh, against these treatments. Uh, and uh, uh, so, uh, so we were, uh, you know, uh, thinking that it would be some other gene which is not in these particular pathways. And uh, we did again uh, bulk segregant analysis and uh, localized this particular mutation. Uh, taking the recombinants which are looking like a, muta a mutant and uh, localize this to chromosome 4 and uh, uh, particularly uh, uh, this marker region and uh, did mapping and then the further refined mapping and uh, this is uh, a very uh, you know strong uh, you know evidence uh, for location of this particular uh, gene in this particular location and we did uh, you know uh, mapping using several recombinants and localized to this particular region <coughs> And uh, uh, in this region, which is uh, uh, about uh, having 153 
uh, you know, predicted genes and it also contained OSCCD7 and uh, CCD7 uh, is, uh, is a homologue uh, of uh, Arabidopsis MAX3 and uh, this gene was physically close to marker RM7187 and uh, what we did again we followed the similar route and uh, we took several recombinants uh, from Nagina and uh, sorry mutant and then IR64 cross and also mutant and Nagina cross and identified those typical uh, high tillering dwarf mutant, uh, mutant type recombinants and then sequence this particular gene and uh, very clearly you can see here uh, there is a substitution but uh, in this particular case two C residues, consecutive C residues uh, changing to A residues and that's what was confirmed not only uh, in the mutant, uh, this particular mutant but also uh, in the uh, dwarf recombinants which we found. Um, so uh, in this particular case when you took the population of a mutant with IR64 uh, because IR64 also having the semi dwarf uh, locus and uh, you know what we found is always this correspondence was not there but there was one to one correspondence in the population which was uh, we, when we took the recombinants from the population which are derived from the cross of M40 that the, that's the mutant and the uh, you know Nagina 20 the original parent cross and uh, this is what is indicated here you can see these are the kind of uh, recombinants and uh, this is Nagina 22 having CC, this is the mutant having AA and all the recombinants uh, you know from this population of mutant with Nagina 22 having this uh, mutation uh, you know uh, both the nucleotides uh, being present there and uh, uh, that's what is uh, known that uh, from carotenoid uh, one goes to uh, strigolactone synthesis uh, and then uh, that is the one which uh, reduces uh, shoot, inhibits uh, shoot branching. Uh, but uh, you know, MAX3 corresponding to uh, this particular uh, mutation, CCD7, uh, probably impairs uh, at this particular stage. Uh, as, a, as a result, uh, this is also impaired and that leads to uh, you know, increased tillering uh, in this particular case. That is that's what uh, we assume at this point in time and probably would require uh, further experiments uh, through transgenics or otherwise uh, to further validate uh, what is uh, happening in this particular mutant. Uh, so, uh, so to summarize, uh, uh, so uh, EMS induced mutants in the background of the OS variety Nagina 22 constitutes uh, a valuable resource for rice functional genomics. Uh, anyone interested can express, uh, you know, interest and write. And uh, bulk significant analysis, selective and graphical genotyping helped rapid mapping of the loci to specific chromosome locations and positional candidate gene approach could successfully be used to identify mutations in the known genes and novel alleles of SRS3 and HTD1 because the di 21 appears to be corresponding to HTD1 were identified and both the mutations created stop codons uh, you know uh, base substitution leading to creation of stop codons and ultimately giving us truncated protein that led to uh, truncated proteins and these are uh, new mutations, uh, newer alleles which are induced by uh, the, uh, these uh, chemicals. Uh, uh, these are acknowledgements, uh, the funding agency, Department of Biotechnology and also the facilities of Indian Council of Agriculture Research which are utilized uh, and then uh, the, the uh, National Research Center for Biotechnology, Indian Agriculture Research Institute and several other uh, PIs and co-PIs. The second, third and fourth author of this paper, they contributed with regard to the work uh, that I presented, uh, the, the three uh, different aspects I presented, uh, one was uh, drought tolerant mutant, the second is seed mutant and third is uh, dwarf and high tillering mutant and three of them which are detailed characterized, they were done by three of the students which are the first, second and third author of this particular uh, you know, paper. And with this uh, I thank you very much for your patience and I hope that I have conveyed something which is meaningful uh, in the context of this big uh, you know, discussion on genomics and using next generation genomics for crop improvement. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mahapatra. Uh, quickly, we can have one or two queries. Very nice, very nice presentation. I wanted to check with you. Uh, you had some gain of function mutants. Yeah. Uh, Male sterility is a very common uh, thing in mutation breeding populations. How sure are you that this is not a result of pollen coming in from outside? We did get uh, male sterile mutants. 
And in fact, uh, we tried to maintain them through struggles. Uh, but then, uh, you know, Delhi conditions, they did not survive somehow. And uh, we have not maintained them uh, as of now. So, but in these ones, there is no male stability. Well, what I'm pushing at is there, in many mutation breeding programs, what has been identified as a result of a cross that yeah. occurred due yeah. to the occurrence of my, yeah. male yeah. sterility. Yeah. So, and, uh, so and right. So, no, no. We, we, we did analyze. We did markers. We did uh, 60 DUS characters to understand if they are different or not. In fact, uh, you know, to tell you that some of those uh, so-called mutants we have in this uh, bank, they differ for several traits. But these ones, uh, you know, they maintain the typical features of Nagina 22. And, uh, uh, and for markers, uh, hardly few or no marker differences. We have used 64 SSR markers to scan the whole genome to see whether there is a difference between these mutants and the Nagina 22. Okay. So, 64 markers. And we do find lines which are having large number of marker differences. So we have chosen for characterization those which don't show uh, any or at least one or few uh, differences, not uh, you know, a large number of differences. Yeah, we have taken that into account. Second okay. question of the dwarf line that, or the dwarf mutant that you found, have you had a chance to look at it under drought stress conditions or look at it in relation to Striga? Uh, because the Striga, the role being in the strigolactone and ABA biosynthetic pathways could contribute a lot of interesting things for many other traits. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's uh, another query. Yeah, hi. Uh, yeah. You've, you've got 548 validated mutants. Um, so that's four, 548 different loci, is that? or are No, different types? traits. Different traits. So okay. we have phenotyped and then progeny testing we have done. And uh, so reconfirmed, so they are validated for specific traits, right. not for genes. Yeah. Oh. So, but we have otherwise 22,000 lines which are maintained, which are yet to be phenotyped. Many of them are yet to be phenotyped. So you've got a huge backcrossing program in, in progress, I guess. Pardon? I have you got a huge? Uh, you must have a huge backcrossing program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going on. So, so, uh, so uh, they, they, each line would be carrying several mut mutations, obviously. And uh, but trait alteration is not resulted uh, by all of them. Uh, so uh, so definitely uh, there are many changes which are uh, not yet uh, identified by uh, us. Yeah, In so the mutant that we have used, they might be carrying there. Certainly they will be carrying many other changes. I guess I was getting to the question, point of what, what sort of allelic coverage have you got at each locus? Like for your DIT1, did you have several alleles in your collection or just one? Yeah, several alleles, uh, for instance, for dwarf, uh, for, we have several uh, mutations for, for instance, we have done tilling for a number of genes. And uh, we have identified a number of, uh, you know, mutations for the same gene. Uh, uh, so there are many examples, but DREB is one, uh, DREB one, we have taken, for instance. Uh, so uh, we have uh, done allelic tests genetically. We have made crosses, for instance, between dwarf mutants. We have done crosses between other mutants, for instance. So that one line of uh, study that we have done, doing allelic test by crossing mutants between each other. And second line is doing tilling to identify, uh, you know, which would be carrying mutation, the same gene. Uh, we have also identified uh, allelic series like this. So the, the whole thing I didn't present. So there are uh, many different things. Yeah. Okay, Dr. Mapatra, might Thank be you all having more questions. All the speakers are here. You can uh, interact during the lunch time. So again, uh, we have very good uh, absorbing session, very interesting uh, presentation. And uh, in the end, uh, uh, we'll have to give a very big uh, hand to all the speakers. Thank you.